Let's see how an quadratic equation looks. Let's start with a simple one. Now, whenever we talk about drawing graphs, we are always going to be dealing with polynomials, right? Or we're not going to have, if we write it as an equation, one side of it is always going to be y. For example, I'll write it something as y equal to x squared. Because I can't write x squared equal to zero. Can I draw a graph of x squared equal to zero? If x squared is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. No other value is possible. So the graph would be senseless, right? All I'll have is a point. If I have an x axis and y axis, x squared equal to zero will be just this one point, which is why when we draw a graph, we want multiple values An equation by definition has one value. The entire expression will have one value. So there'll be one, probably two, maybe three. We'll figure out how many values of x, which actually satisfy that equation. So we'll actually draw graphs always of polynomials. So we have y equal to x squared here. It is an equation because we are equating it to y. So y axis and x axis. The graph of this equation will be a parabola like this, a very simple one, which actually passes through your origin. How did we get this graph? Very simple. Let's start with x is equal to zero. If you put x is equal to zero there, you're going to get y is equal to zero. So y is equal to zero, x is equal to zero. That's your origin. Very simple. Let's try x equal to one. If we put x equal to one, we'll get y equal to one as well, because one square is one. So x equal to one, y equal to one. We get this point. Let's try x equal to minus one, something on the other side. If x is minus one, y will again be one, because minus one square is also one. So you'll get x is minus one, y is one. Both of these end up at the same level. Similarly, if you put x equal to two or x equal to minus two, you'll end up with y is equal to four and so on. That's how you get this nice curve. This is the simplest quadratic equation possible, right? Just x squared. The bare minimum that we need for a quadratic equation is all that we have. That is x with a degree of two. This is the simplest one. Now there are a lot of things we can do with this one graph. Imagine if you were allowed to play with this curve, what could you do with it? You could move it right or left. You could move it up or down. You could change its shape. We don't like this. We want it to smile more. We want it to frown all the way, right? You could move its shape or you could even rotate it. So there are four things we could do with it. Move it horizontally, move it vertically, change its shape or rotate it. Those are the things that we are going to learn now. Mathematically, how do you move it horizontally? How do you move it vertically? How do you change its shape? Thankfully, we don't have to worry about how to rotate it right now. When you rotate it, this becomes something called as an oblique parabola. In the quadratic equations that we are going to deal with, we thankfully don't have to deal with these obliques. So forget about rotation for now. The three things that we are going to try to do this parabola is change its shape, move it horizontally and move it vertically. Right? Let's start moving it horizontally. Let's say I start with this and I actually want to move this right by two units. How do I do that in the equation? My original equation was y equal to x squared. What will it become if I want to move this parabola two units to the right? Think of, so we have two parabolas now, the original one that we started with and the new one that we got by moving it. From this one, the blue parabola that you see here, which is our new one, how do you get back the original red one? What do you do? Every x, if you move this x, think, look at each point. If I move this, two units to the left, that is reduce x by two. I'll come back to my original position. Similarly, look at any point. If you move any of these points, two units to your left, that is in geometrical terms, if you reduce its x coordinate by two, you will end up at the original place. Logical, right? I started with telling you that you want to move the parabola to the right by two units. So obviously you'll get back the original if you move it to the left by two units. Now what is moving to the left by two units in math? You know that when you go right, it's plus. When you go left, it's minus. Correct? So if you want to go left by two units to get your original equation, what do you want to do? Instead of x, what you'll need is x minus two. Correct? Every x on this blue parabola will have to be reduced by two to come back to our original one. So start with your original equation. Instead of x, put x minus two and you get your new one. So this blue parabola for us is nothing but y equal to x minus two, the whole square, as simple as that. Think of what do I need to do to bring it back to its original position. In this case, I need to subtract x by two units. I need to reduce x by two units to bring it back to its original position. That's why this will be y equal to x minus two, the whole square. What if we want to move it to the other side now? 
forget this one i take the same parabola now i'm moving it to the other side by 3 units let's say so i'm moving it left by 3 units what would your equation be y equal to x plus 3 squared perfect you got it why did we get x plus 3 squared if i take this new parabola the blue one and bring it to the original position i need to move it right by 3 units if i move this right by 3 units it's going to come back to the original position right is positive 3 units hence plus 3 so in place of x you write x plus 3 so y equal to x plus 3 the whole square very simple so if you want to move your parabola horizontally we know how to do it mathematically now you tell me to move it to the right by 10 units right by 10 units right don't get confused right by 10 units doesn't mean plus 10 think of what do i need to do to bring it back to its original position right by 10 units means it's gone here to bring it back to its original position i need to move left by 10 units so i need to reduce x by 10 so in place of x i need to put x minus 10 the whole square so it will be y is equal to x minus 10 the whole square if you i want to move it left by 15 units think what do i need to do to bring it back move it left by 15 units to bring it back i need to move my entire parabola right by 15 units right by 15 so plus 15 y equal to x plus 15 the whole square that's how you will move it horizontally now can you tell me how will you move it vertically for moving it horizontally we changed our x logically what should we change to move it vertically why very obvious right common sense i don't really need to teach you this you don't actually need to learn how to plot different things once you understand what is the logic behind it i give you any graph you'll be able to figure out on your own what actually happened with now why for example you're going to be able to figure out on your own we'll start with the same simple one y equal to x squared we have it in front of us now let's say i want to move it up by 3 units that's where my new graph is going to be let's again take the new one as blue and old one as red what is the equation of this y minus 3 equal to x squared how did we get that so quickly from the blue one how do i bring the blue one to the red position i'll reduce y by 3 units correct this point i'll reduce it by 3 this point i'll reduce it by 3 this point by 3 every point i need to reduce it by 3 units correct because our original statement problem statement was to move the graph up by 3 units which automatically means that to bring it back to the original position we'll need to bring it down by 3 units so we are bringing it down by 3 units down is negative right on the y axis what's a sign convention up is positive down is negative so we are bringing the graph down by 3 units which means minus 3 that's why we wrote y minus 3 equal to x squared x we are not changing right nothing changed with x all we did was move it up now if we want to do both of these things suppose i want to move it right by 2 and up by 3 both of these just think about how you would physically do it you can do this one after the other first you move it right by 2 and then you move it up by 3 possible that's exactly how you'll think about writing the equation also so start with y equal to x squared first move it right by 2 units what will happen y equal to x minus 2 the whole square now move it up by 3 units for moving it up you need to make y y minus 3 so instead of y right y minus 3 so you'll get y minus 3 equal to x minus 2 the whole square that's it so all of these steps moving it horizontally and vertically can be done consecutively correct one after the other which is why you can separately change the value of x and change the value of y it doesn't matter whether you're doing only one of these operations or multiple operations at the same time the process you'll follow will be exactly the same now if i tell you i want a parabola which has moved left by 5 units and up by 10 units left by 5 and up by 10 How do you do it? Think of how will I bring it back to my original position. So this is where it is. This is where it is. First, what do I need to do? It's gone up by ten. So I need to bring it down by ten. Down by ten means minus ten. So we'll write y minus ten. Correct. Down always down and up correspond to y. Right and left correspond to x. So down by ten means y minus ten. Now I need to move it right by five. Only then it will come back to my original position. Right by five means plus five. So it will be y minus ten equal to x plus five the whole square, as simple as that. Nothing difficult at all, correct? Now, when you are given a problem, you might not always be given that it's moved up and it's moved down. Those are not the words we use, right? We typically use words called as coordinates. This is nothing but a coordinate axis, right? We have a y axis and a x axis. We are talking about coordinate geometry here. 
So we are actually studying algebra, but when you graph it, it becomes coordinate geometry. How will you figure out that it's actually moved left by five or right by ten? All you need to do is look at the vertex of this parabola. Technically, you can look at any point as long as you are looking at the same point again and again. Now, in these two graphs, if I take a point A here and I take another A, by simply looking at these two points, you won't be sure that it's the same A, right? It might be a different point. Easiest point, if I tell you, look at these two graphs and pick one point which you are sure. Is the same for the two graphs. It's the same on that particular curve. It would be the vertex, right? When I move this graph from here to here, I'm sure that this vertex is going to come here. It's the bottommost point. I can clearly see it. So we always look at everything with respect to the vertex. So in your original parabola, you know that your vertex was zero zero. Now in this new one, what do you see the vertex as? Minus five comma ten. You see it as minus five comma ten. That means what has happened? That will automatically tell you. That means my parabola minus five, so moved left by five, plus ten, and moved. So to bring it back, what do I need to do? I need to do the exact reverse of that. So don't get confused by the minus five and ten. I need to do the reverse of that. It's gone up by ten, so now I need to bring it down by ten. So instead of the plus ten that I have there, I need to write a minus ten here. That's why we got y minus ten. And it had moved left by five, so to bring it back, I need to move it right by five. So instead of the minus five, I need to write a plus five. So y minus ten equal to x plus five the whole square. So if you just think of it, if these were any two alphabets h and k, right? If this vertex of the parabola was h and k, what my equation actually becomes is y minus k equal to x minus h the whole square. But don't blindly memorize it because if you blindly memorize it, then you'll suddenly get confused. Was my vertex h k or minus h minus k? All of these things are confusing, right? So don't ever memorize it. Very simple thing. How do I bring my parabola back to the original position? That's what you need to think about. If you go up, it's positive. If you go down, it's negative. If you go right, it's positive. If you go left, it's negative. As simple as that. Great. So we we are already done with two parts, right? We said we can do three things with our parabola: change its shape, move it horizontally, move it vertically. We are already done with two of those. We know how to move it horizontally. We know how to move it vertically. Let's now try and change its shape. So we have our basic graph again, y equal to x square. Now, can we make it smile more or smile less? Basically, can we increase its curvature more? Can we open it up or can we close it? How do we do that? Now, y is equal to x squared. The coefficient of x here is one. Right? This is nothing but y equal to one x squared. The way to change the shape is actually by changing that coefficient. It's simple, y. See, I'll tell you. We have y equal to x squared. When x is equal to one, y is one. Similarly, when x is minus one, also y is one. So we got these two points. Now let me write y equal to two x squared. Now what happens if x is one? If x is one, the value of y becomes two because two into one squared. So when x is one, that is at this same point, y actually becomes two. Similarly, when x is minus one, also y becomes two. The same thing will hold good when x is two and minus two. Earlier, the points we got were four. Now, what do you get? You get eight. Instead of four, you get double of four because you have two x squared. So every point doubles. That's why your graph becomes steeper. So the parabola closes in common language as the coefficient of x increases. So from one, if I make it two, three, four, and so on, it will keep closing. Similarly, if I reduce it from one, if I make it half. One fourth, it will keep opening up, and finally at zero, what will happen? It will be a perfect straight line. Why will it be a straight line? Y is equal to zero. What is y is equal to zero? Equation of x-axis. That's why it becomes a straight line. It becomes our x-axis. Think back to what we were saying is a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation or a quadratic polynomial is something where the highest degree of x is two. If my coefficient of x becomes zero. Suppose I have x squared plus x plus one. Instead of x squared, if I put zero x squared, what will happen? The equation is x plus one. It becomes linear. That's what the graph shows you, right? When the coefficient of x is becoming zero, instead of a parabola, instead of a curve, you are getting a straight line. That's why you get a straight line. Now, can you reduce the coefficient below zero? Definitely possible. Let's move our parabola a little up because I want to reduce the coefficient below zero. So now I make it minus x squared. 
minus x squared is going to turn the other way around. And as you increase the negativity, it will keep turning more and more. So minus 2x squared, minus 3x squared and so on, it will keep turning more and more on the other side. So whenever the coefficient of x squared is positive, you see a graph like this, which is what we call an upward facing parabola. When the coefficient becomes negative, it becomes a downward facing parabola. So as the value of the coefficient increases, the curve gets steeper and steeper. It starts closing. As the value reduces, it keeps opening. Finally, it becomes zero and then it turns to the other side. So that is what the coefficient of x squared does. So your shape is basically determined by the coefficient of x squared. Now let's go back to changing the parabola in all these three ways. We saw three changes, right? Shape, horizontal, vertical. So we start with y equal to x squared. Now let's say I want to move it right by 5, up by 3. How do I do it? By now you should be quick with this, right? Right by 5, up by 3 means this is 5, comma 3. So it will be what you write in your equation is minus 5 and minus 3. So y minus 3 equal to x minus 5 the whole square. Don't remember it this way. Remember it. What do I do to bring it back? What do I do? I first bring it down by 3. That's why y minus 3. Then left by 5. That's why x minus 5. Now, in addition to doing this, I also want to close this. I also want to close this. I want to make it slope steeper. Twice, let's say. So this will become y minus 3 equal to 2 times x minus 5 the whole square. So all of these three changes, you can do it simultaneously. So these three things, what we define this in general as y minus k. If this point, the vertex of this parabola is h comma k, this will be y minus k equal to some constant. Let me call it s because it determines shape. So s into x minus h the whole square. That's a simple way in which we can write the equation, right? This is actually the most intuitive way in which to write a quadratic equation so that you can visualize it. We normally don't write it this way, right? The common way we write it is ax squared plus bx plus c. And that can easily be related to this. And I'll show you how. But the simplest way to think of a quadratic equation, which helps you plot its graph very easily, is this way. Think of it as y minus k equal to s into x minus h, the whole square. S will show you what the shape of your curve is. H comma K will be the vertex or the lowermost point of your parabola. That's all there is to drawing a quadratic equation. Now, any equation that you're given, you can very easily convert it to this format and you can draw a graph of the equation. That's it. Whatever equation I give you, you'll actually be able to draw a graph. Let's test you. The equation you had was Y equal to X minus 3 the whole squared plus 7. Now, rather than trying to draw the graph directly in this format, convert it into something that we are used to. What are we used to? Y minus K equal to X minus H, the whole square. So take the 7 on the side of Y. So what will it become? Y minus 7 equal to X minus 3, the whole square. If you compare it to Y minus K equal to X minus H, the whole square, you will get K is equal to 7 and H is equal to 3. K is equal to 7 and H is equal to 3 means if you plot a graph where your vertex lies is 3 comma 7. Vertex is nothing but H comma K, right? So 3 comma 7. So this is where your vertex lies. This is how your parabola will look. Do a quick check. Do a quick check. What does it say? Y minus 7. So to bring it back to the original position, we need to reduce, bring Y down by 7. So bring this down by 7. And X minus 3. So bring it left by 3. Perfect. It brings you to your original position, right? That means the answer you got is correct. You can actually do the same thing with every answer option and check whether it's correct or not. For example, the first answer option you had was 3 comma minus 7. Check. To bring it to the original position, you need to bring y down by 7. Now from 3 minus 7, if you bring y down by 7, it's going to not reach your origin, right? It's going to go out. So it's clearly wrong. Look at the second one. Minus 3, minus 7. This is where your graph was. Again, if you bring y down by 7, it goes down. It doesn't reach the origin. So this way, you don't even need to actually compare it with h and k. You can simply look at your answer options and check. If I bring y down by 7 and x, so basically if I bring the graph down by 7 and left by 3, do I reach my original position? You'll reach it only if it is at 3, 7. If you bring it down by 7, left by 3. 
or the other way to do it is the way we solved it h and k so whatever you are comfortable with if you are comfortable with visualizing things down by 7 left by 3 back to original position is easier if you are comfortable with equations and algebra then comparing it with h and k is easier anyway a pretty easy question slightly tougher question right we had y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 6 what do we do this with this now we are used to the format y minus k equal to s into x minus h the whole squared what do we do with this doesn't look nice right not very difficult all you need to do what do you want at the end of the day look at your equation what do you want you want an x minus h the whole square so you basically want a complete square right you want a perfect square let's see how we can convert this to a perfect square we are given x squared minus 2x plus 6 now if we were to get a plus b the whole square what will you have a squared plus 2ab plus b square let's compare it we have x squared here corresponding to a square so that means x can be a so we can keep x squared as it is second term has to be 2 into a into b so this should be plus 2 into a is already x so into x into now b is what we need to find out your term is minus 2x what do you need to multiply by to get minus 2x minus 1 right so put that minus 1 in there that means automatically your b has become minus 1 third term is plus b squared so right plus minus 1 squared great so we have a perfect square but we can't just do whatever we want right the original equation should be maintained in our original equation we had a plus 6 we have changed that to a plus 1 so we need to add 5 more here so put a plus 5 there now your original equation and your changed equation are exactly the same now it's simple look at the first three terms this is nothing but x minus 1 the whole square right so co compress it to x minus 1 the whole square plus 5 so you have y equal to x minus 1 the whole squared plus 5 you'll take the 5 close to the y so take the 5 on the other side it becomes a minus 5 so you have y minus 5 equal to x minus 1 the whole squared very simple y minus k equal to x minus h the whole squared h comma k is your vertex so 1 comma 5 will be the vertex so now you can simply draw the parabola y and x axis 1 comma 5 will be the vertex draw a parabola here that's your answer very simple so what do you do when the equation is not in the form that we are used to you complete the square for x you complete the square make it a perfect square and convert it convert it to the form that we want very similar to the previous question again just one slight difference right now we have minus x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus x squared is something that we don't like right if you do a plus b the whole square there is no value of a that's going to give you a negative square minus x squared we don't like dealing with that's why very simple whenever you see a minus sign we don't like dealing with it right don't deal with it as simple as that that's the simple funda that you will use to solve any problem whatever you don't like don't deal with it how can you not deal with the mind of course don't deal with it legally right legally means using mathematical rules so how can we not deal with minus sign put it outside the bracket so instead of writing this as minus x squared plus 4x plus 1 if i take the minus sign outside the bracket what will i get x squared minus 4x minus 1 right because minus into minus will become plus minus into minus will become plus perfect now i don't need to deal with the minus sign it's sitting outside the bracket i am not going to worry about it now i am just left with x squared minus 4x minus 1 exactly the same as the previous problem we saw compare it to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared so a will again be x second term will be 2 into x into b is what we need to find out what will b be I need to get a minus 4x, so I need to multiply this by minus 2. Correct? Only if I multiply it by minus 2, the value of this entire term will become minus 4x. So b is minus 2. The third term is minus 2 the whole square, which is plus 4. What I was actually interested in was minus 1. Our original equation had minus 1, and we cannot change that. How will you get minus 1 when you have plus 4? You subtract 5 from it, right? So you'll get a minus 5. Now. the first three terms you can com compress them into x minus 2 the whole square so x minus 2 the whole square minus 5 now open up the brackets open up the minus sign so you will get minus of x minus 2 the whole square plus 5 take the 5 to the other side of the equation so you have y minus 5 equal to minus of x minus 2 the whole square right so comparing it to h and k you know that your vertex is going to be 2 comma 5 right because k is equal to 2 compare it to y minus k equal to s into h minus x minus h the whole square 
So H is two and Y is five. So two comma five. So draw your graph here. You have two comma five. You have the vertex here. Can I draw this parabola? Though I don't like minus signs, I can't forget about them, right? That would be wrong. Why is that wrong? Because S is minus one. You can't forget about the shape. What did we say when S was negative? What happens? It frowns, right? Instead of smiling, it's a downward facing parabola. When the coefficient of the x term is negative, it's a downward facing parabola. So it won't be like this. Just turn it around. It will be facing downwards. The vertex will still be two comma five, but it will face downwards. So that's what your answer is going to look like.